So as far as infants go and toddlers, children who aren't able to speak, at least in fluent sentences or at all, there are signs that can be very disturbing. These also probably apply to younger kids, um, even who are verbal, but there are signs that you may notice if your child is being sexually abused by a babysitter or really anyone. Um, but I'll just focus on the babysitter for this, for this discussion. With infants, you want to keep an eye out for the diaper area, for the genitalia, the anus area, that whole, in everything included in the diaper area. If you happen to notice rashes or infections, and you see patterns when that babysitter is with them, is taking care of your child, or even just with them, with you, you can also be there. Sometimes people hire babysitters or family to come with them on vacation. Um, so if you notice rashes, bladder infection, urinary tract infection, yeast infection, and it happens when that when that specific person is around them or shortly after, definitely keep an eye on that. Um, I wouldn't, you know, point a finger and accuse someone of molesting your child if, you, if they have a rash alone. I would definitely put it in the red flag category to keep a strong eye on, to say the least. Um, look for redness in the genital area, same as the butt. If you see that it looks, you know, there's obviously any blood would be a huge sign. Any sort of rawness, something that just doesn't make sense, um, that would be a very severe issue that you want to address immediately, um, especially any bleeding. So you'll look for things like that with infants and also with babies and, and really young kids, you can see their reaction to... Babies have a strong intuition, I believe. And if they are, you know, really not happy with that babysitter, or they're crying more than, you know, their normal cry, just stay in tune with your babies and your children. Watch how they respond. Um... I mean, of course, there's natural things like separation anxiety, and this is kind of the hard part about trying to get the word out and educate people because there are there's so many gray areas, and nothing that I'm saying is set in stone except for the bleeding. Um, but there are definitely things that you need to be aware of and follow your instinct. Listen to your kids. I can't stress that enough. You know, if a child feels safe with a caregiver, they shouldn't be in mass hysteria or really fearful. So, you know, pay attention to those things. And, you know, like I said many times already, come home early, pop in, call, listen to the background. If the baby, if your child can talk, talk to them. Pay attention to their body afterwards. Um, you know, this doesn't have to be on a heightened alarm kind of way that you go about it, but these are things that you want to integrate into your natural daily life with your kids just so that you're being really aware of their emotional cues, their physical cues, so you can hopefully notice if anything is going wrong in the sexual abuse arena. Um, I think that about wraps it up for today's discussion. And, and there'll be follow-ups on all sorts of... There's so many branches to each area. And that's why I encourage you to please leave feedback and ask questions. And I'm happy. I definitely don't know everything by any means. But I'm really happy to share the things that I've learned from my schooling and from my work with sex offenders and from my work with victims of sexual abuse. 
whoops so have a great night stay safe and keep your baby safe and bear with me as I learn how to use all this technology thank you have a good night